Hi y'all, I'm on the other side of the camera right now. Something that I don't always do. I probably should do more of it, but I don't know. You know, I'm a creature of habit. But I wanted to just let you all know about this new offer that I'm putting out. There's these master classes on large scale gel printing, eco staining, collage, boro style, and um, coded language. And I've put together a really cool bundle making it very, very affordable. I'll roll out one course a month. It will have a pre-recorded piece to it. And then a week later, we get together in a Zoom session to do Q&A. Um, for those of you who are familiar with my courses, you know this is a, um, a style course that you guys really love. For those of you who are new to it, it gives you a chance to go through the pre-recorded material, work, you know, enjoy it in your studio time. And then that way, when we get together for a Q&A, you'll have some experience with it. You'll have some idea of what worked, what didn't work. And so you can really pick my brain. And I do demos in that as well. So the link is in the bio. The bundle is there for $285. So that means you get four courses for that. And I have 100 spots open. So um, jump in and grab your spot. And uh, I look forward to hanging out with you in this masterclass series, which is eyes swollen from inspiration, because there's gonna be a lot of inspiration in this course. And that's the benchmark for my work. I can't get enough of nature walks and finding things and hitting flea markets. And oh, you guys are like me, you know what it's like. So I look forward to seeing you in the course. Take care. Hello YouTube. So we're back for another Saturday and this Saturday is our folded book project for the month. So you know every month I'm coming up with a different folded book project so we can take our gel prints and the techniques that we've used through the month and then create you know a folded structure with them. So if you're on this journey with me by the time you get to the end of the year you're gonna have 12 folded book structures all that are going to be different from the other. Um, maybe some of them will incorporate different aspects of them, but it'll sort of be like, a, it'll be a different book structure. So, um, and just sharing out with you all different books that I've made over the years. And um, some of them have been ones that I've, you know, kind of developed myself. Others are, are, have, have been around forever or are sort of like, um, sort of compilations of different techniques. So over in um, Patreon, we did a printmaking session on our file folders using sort of like this really, um, this really sort of painterly technique um, that we were exploring. And we did them on these file folders because file folders are going to give us the right kind of strength that we want for this folded book project. And then I did some, um, some of my intuitive scripting, my what I call my um, graffiti style on these. So you can sort of see each is, is a bit different. This one. So one side I sort of did the painting on, the other side I, I left it, oops, sorry, blank. And you'll sort of see why when we put this book together. And this is more of my sort of my Asian scripting, that one there, but like so graffiti-like still. I think with the colorful background, that's what really does it. So um, what I'm going to, so you could take any of the techniques that we've been doing and print on some file folders and let them dry. You really want them to dry. So let them dry overnight so that all the moisture is out of them. When we go to fold and stuff, you don't want a lot of moisture in them. Um, and then you'll be ready to go. But in the meantime, if you just want to grab a, fold, a file folder and at least practice the structure, that would probably be a good idea to practice it before you commit, you know, your good prints to it. So I think I'm going to have this as my cover. I think that's going to be my cover. One of these two. And then I need, I need the inside spine. So that's going to be a cover. And this could be good for a spine. And we're going to need um, two covers, a spine, and 
five pages for the inside. So I did four or five folders thinking that would probably be enough. So we're going to work through it and then you'll know specifically. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut the cover down. That's probably a good place to start so you'll know what it is that you're working with. This file folder is the eight and a half by, is this 14? Yeah, this is, this is a nine, actually a nine by 15. This is a vintage folder. I don't even think they do them this long any longer, but this is the size I'm working with, but you certainly can work with an eight and a half by 11 should still work for this, but it might be like an inch off. So if you can get your larger file folder, it doesn't have to be this long. It's just as long as it's, um, well, you'll see when we go through the measurements. If you don't have any large file folders, that's okay. You can just slightly tweak the measurement and I'll show you how to do that because we need a certain length and I'm going to step you through all of that. So I'm gonna put this one to the side. I think I'll do something else with this one, and this one right here will be my cover. I need it seven and a half high. Maybe I'll make this my cover because, yeah, this one goes to the side, and this is going to be my cover. Now, this kind of perforated edge that's on the bottom, I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm starting off by just getting my covers cut this whole structure will be folded there's no no sewing just folding and gluing but just have to get everything I find it's best to just get everything cut and um, in place and then do the folding and I'm so excited to get started. I forgot to say, welcome to my channel. I'm Robin McClendon. I'm a mixed media artist. We do gel printing, book binding, um, mark making, collaging over here on the channel. So if you're new or you just stumbled upon me, my apologies for, you know, forgetting my studio manners and saying hello and welcoming you. But we've been working on this project. We're working on it all year. It's going to follow my um my book that um came out in october 28th of 2023 and actually i don't know if i share this with you all yet but i heard from my my publisher for me to start looking at any kind of revisions because i'm on the watch list for the book to go into its third printing oh my god i'm just overwhelmed with so much gratitude that this book has done so well definitely beyond my expectations and I just have like all of those you, you guys amazing creators in this community that are as passionate about gel printing as I am that you've like supported the book project and wanted to have the book and feel like you're getting so much out of it so yeah we're ready to go into a third printing it's crazy so now that what I did is I cut this to seven and a half high that's kind of the height that i went for to sort of um i think that you know that's a nice size and it fits our file folders because even if you work with an eight and a half by 11 you have to use the whole length at the 11 inches and i'll show you how you have to tweak that a little bit but you have that height of seven and a half which is a pretty good height okay so then the book pages are going to be five inches wide so I'm going to cut the covers the width and just kind of get that part out of the way. So I'm going to take off this edge here where it's a little overextended right there. Let's get rid of that. So the main thing is if you don't have the larger file folder, and even if you do, you're just really paying attention to the various... Um, measurements. Let me go ahead and cut this side off too because I'm not sure. Let me see. One, two, three, four, let me see. One, two, three, four, five. That would be that. One, two, three, four, five. 
and that would be that. Okay, then I'm just going to go ahead and cut these. So it's five inches wide, seven and a half inches tall. One, two, three, four, five. What's the old adage? Count twice, measure twice, count, uh, cut once. I'm always counting one. I always count and recount. I've done books for so long and have made measuring mistakes on stuff that is almost impossible to replace. And you're like, oh my goodness, how'd you do that? So always stop and measure twice. Even when you think you got it, measure again. One, two, three, four, five. That's, uh, that is definitely a tip that I can pass on. So even I have it down, I just, I'm going to count it again. One, two, three, four, five, because you just never know. Okay. And since all this is valuable real estate, like this is going to be great for something. You know, all these little pieces just look so good. Okay. Now, these are going to be my covers. So we have two covers, five inches by seven and a half. So we're going to put those um, to the side. Now we're going to get one that I can use for the spine. So I think I'm going to make this a spine piece. So once again, I'm just going to cut um, on the other side of that sort of corrugated, you know, folded area of the, um, of the file folder. I don't want to incorporate that in the book. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay. Now we'll be using this part of the file folder. This other one, I could have used this part too. So keep in mind that right now I'm using two different file folders, which will probably be enough. One, two, maybe one extra for the, for the inside pages. Although I could use this one as an extra. You'll see where I'm going with that. So maybe two file folders will get it, but I decided I'm going to use this for something else probably. So this could make another really cool cover. So I'm going to hold on to that, but I'm, we're just kind of keeping track of like, you know, the number of file folders I'm using. So now this also needs to be seven and a half high. So the spine, this is what we're going to, this is going to be our spine piece and we're going to be folding it. So it needs to be seven and a half high as well to match our covers. So let's get that measurement. And this is probably just a good one to look at. And then once, you know, I finish, once the video is done, maybe come back and then do the process. seven and a half because you don't want to, you know, you want to kind of give yourself a chance to absorb it and not feel overwhelmed and to sort of see where I'm going with it. So just have your cup of coffee or tea or, um, and relax and see how this folded book project is going to go. But it's really an easy project. The most you're doing is cutting. So now that's seven and a half. So that's going to match my covers. Okay. Alrighty. Now, this is what we're going to then fold. So I'm going to get my scoreboard. I tell you, this was one of this. This was one. Of, this was a very good investment that I really was, you know, like wasn't sure because I was always so used to kind of doing my scoring a little differently. If you get your hands on one of these or find that, you know, a, a sale on them or some kind of promotional, I find that anything that you want to score, um, concertina folds, anything, this is invaluable. So now I am going to, this book is going to have five folds in it. We're going to have five folded areas. Um... 
you know, I'm going to do four because I want to make it so that if you have an eight and a half by 11 foul folder, then you're going to have enough. You won't have to worry about going large. So let's do that. That way this works for everyone. So that means that I'm going to have one inch at the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and score that. We're going to be doing it in one inch dimensions, which is great. But for every fold, and I kind of show you a bit of a template here so you can see. So this is what we're going to go for. So for every folded area, it needs to be two inches. So this is going to be our, our, um, our free edge. This is what we're going to actually glue our covers to. Excuse my fingernails. I tell you, I have been painting and painting. There's paint all over them. Then I've been sort of peeling it off. So I apologize. You know, I don't, I don't like messy nails, but here we are today. So every folded area is going to take two, two inches. So one inch, two inch, that makes a fold. So the, the, the math on this is for every fold that you want, you want to have two inches per fold. So if we want four folds, that need, means our piece needs to be eight inches plus an inch on either side. So we needed eight, nine, 10 inches. And so with an eight and a half by 11 file folder, that is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna go up to eight, nine, 10. So I'm gonna go up to 10. And this is going to be our spot, okay? So then you just want to score every inch. And on these boards, it's good because it's all figured for you. So no complex measurements. Okay. I'm just going to go over them again. You can do this with any kind of, um, any sort of strong paper, but you want the paper to be um, maybe a 300 GSM, something like that, or what is 120 weight um, paper, preferably like a watercolor paper or something that's pretty tough. Um, I'm using the file folder because I think the fir first of all, we all have file folders. So you don't, even if you just go into your, you know, your, your file and, Get one you haven't used for a while and use that. Most of us have file folders. So I figured that was an easy substrate to work with. And now what I'm doing is you see I'm just folding accordion style. So just fold each one and then, you know, you may have to, like right here, I have to reverse the fold. So you reverse it like that and then you flip it. And reverse it. So now that should give us yep, four. So one, two, three, four. And then this is going to be our end. So I'm going to cut that off now. So we have one, two, three, four folds. And this is going to be the back side. So you can just sort of decide which side you want. But I wanted that graffiti to be on the back side. So it'll it'll all kind of be very sculptural. So this book, it has a lot of movement to it and it's also really sculptural, but you can also close it up to by, you know, like I'll use a tie or something. So now I always like to here again, measure your folds right. So just make sure you have four mountains, one, two, three, four mountains, and you're gonna have one flat side and another flat side with four mountains in between. And if that's the case, then you know you're good. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut this and get this extra piece off, which could actually be used as a page in your, in your, um, in your legal size folders, because you'll have this as an extra. But if you're using your, um, see, so that becomes an extra page, which is cool. And if you're using your, um, 
standard size, then you won't have anything. You'll just have a little piece left over, but that's okay because you could just use another file folder. So now this is our spine. So we have cover, cover, and we have our spine. So now that is the, this is the structure of the book, done. We have to put the pages in now, which is where some of the fun comes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue this. Um, you can use your glue stick. I'm going to use a Giotto because, you know, Giotto is a really good, strong glue. But you can also use a white glue, like your PVA, um, glitter glue, any strong glue would be great. So now this is going to be the back side of my... Um, let me just make sure I'm standing this up. I want to get my covers right. So I kind of feel like that could be the front. This could be the back. Okay, so that's going to be my front. This is going to be my back. So this is the back. And it's just because I have a print on here that I'm kind of conscious of it, but you know, if you um, are just kind of, if it doesn't matter, it you know, to you what's the top or the bottom, then don't worry about it. Or if you're just doing your first one where you, um, you know, don't have any, any images on there. But it's good to know that you're going to want to sort of think about that when you do go to do your, um, and then that's going to go there. Look how much fun this is already. Oh, love it. And it's just so cool. Mm. And uh, running my mouth. I want to make sure I get it right. Okay, that edge. <laughs> so let's put it on here. So you see I'm just putting on that, that one inch flap that we left out. So that one inch that we left at the beginning and the end is where, that's where your cover goes. And if you look at it again, you still have one, two, three, four mountains. One, two, three, four mountains. Okay. So here we put the cover down. That's going to go there. And I'm, and I'm putting the edge of the cover right up to the fold, right up to that edge of that accordion fold. So it goes right there like that. Okay. So just take some of this glue off. So this is our structure. And now we get to put the inside pages in, which is going to be a lot of fun. And it'll, it'll continue to open. This book is, well, especially because I'm using the file folder. If you were using a soft paper, the spine would be a little less um, stiff. But this one is designed to, to be this crazy um, book structure that you're going to see. But we can also, you know, of course, wrap um ribbon or I'm going to use a little bit of um, frayed my frayed um, canvas like this so you can use anything to hold this you know the spine in place when we, when we get to that but right now we're going to let it and then when you take it out you're going to have this fun sort of pop out sculpture book now we're going to do the pages so we need four pages. I think I am going to go with these because that would be one, which would incorporate um, let me get this other one cut, which I'm going to use this. These pages will go good inside and out. So now we want the inside page to be a little bit shorter than the actual um, cover. 
because these are going to be the inside pages. So we don't want them the same height or, or popping out. So I'm going to go with this four and a quarter because that was what was left over. You can do four and a quarter, four and a half. If you have to cut new pages, you can do the four and a half, um, which gives you that little, you know, extra from the, the width of the cover, which was five, right? So our cover was five inches wide by seven inches high. So you want the pages to fall inside of that. So right now I have two. So let's just get two more. I almost feel like I want to cut it in a different direction. I might cut it this way. So let's just do seven across. Just to kind of change the directions of the mark making. So we need it seven high. Move this out the way. Still in the frame, everything's good. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I've just chosen to change the direction of the way the scripting is going to go. Okay. Seven, and then we'll do this one. Just line it up. No need to measure again. That way we know it's going to be the same height. you can see this is uh it's it's a bit of a, a a process but we'll get this done we're almost done actually so we actually with all the exclamations ex explanations sorry and uh the hellos and all that stuff we were at 20 minutes so it's not bad the whole the structure is actually done we're just working on the pages now so i'm gonna do this page I wanted it this way. So, let's cut this. So this again is going to be seven and a half by, I wonder if I should get the, oh, I love the running part. Let me just see. I'm going to get the part that runs. And these pieces can be used for something else. Of course, you know we're not throwing that away. And then let's get this one. Okay. So that's going to give me my four pages. For inside the book. So, this is where the fun is going to come in. And now we have our pages. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so each one of these pages will go inside the book. One, two, three, four. So you can see each of those um, little mountains are going to accommodate the page. But this is where the fun is going to come in. We're going to cut these pages into threes. And then you can also manipulate how we're going to put them down. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. So we need two. Now this is where the advanced mathematics comes in, right? Well, actually, no. Each one should be two and a half. So two and a half would give us exactly, yeah, two and a half. That one's easy enough. That was almost too easy. 
So two and a half, and then two and a half, and two and a half. So seven and a half works out perfectly to get us three sections at two and a half. Now I'm cutting through the sections. And if you're using the X-Acto, don't try to get through it all at one time. Just take your time and just keep on slicing until you get through. So that's one. And let's do another two and a half. And that's going to give us even sections. Two and a half. Now, these pages can be put down. Sort of any in any order like now you don't have to stick to the order that um, you originally the page was originally in and that that's that makes it fun too so we have three sections and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fun and make it random I'm not going to over plan it that's four and then this is four so We'll just have some fun. We'll flip flip them. We can do all kinds of things. So starting here, I'm going to just begin gluing. And what you want to do is you want to put glue on. We're going to put glue on, on the card here because that way um, it doesn't matter if the whole flap isn't covered, honestly. That way you don't get extra glue everywhere. So I'm get my Giotto and you're just going to kind of just get a real good coverage. Like I said, it doesn't have to be the full um, piece. Now we're going to bring it out about just maybe an eighth of an inch from the fold, just so it's not right in the fold. And you're going to line it up with the top of your page. And then change it up. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one here. How cool! Ah, love it. And then, the, then it, you have one at the top and one at the bottom. You know, just kind of eyeball it. If you, if you know, if you want to, you can make a line, but you can, you can sort of eyeball it just easy enough. And then use the, the the bottom and the top of the book as a guide for getting it. You know, a nice right angle. Okay, so now that's going to go there, and then this one is going to go here. Oops, did you move on me? Yes, you did. Um, the Giotto grabs pretty quickly, so we shouldn't have to do too much waiting around. But So you can see, we just kind of do every other. So I'm going to get these on here. Same thing on the other side, just kind of get it in the center of those two and use the edge here as a guide for, um, you know, use this as a, as a guide for how far this one on this side can come out. And that's the beginning of this fun little book. So I'm going to keep on gluing this down. I'll do it so you can see it again. So that is on this flap. So you put two on the front and one on the back. Now we're going to go to the next flap. We don't do anything else here. So let's get another one going. Um, kind of want to mix it up, yeah, so that we have different things opposite each other, okay? Like I said, it may, you may be looking at this right now thinking, what in the world? Just go easy, and I promise you, it'll make sense 
once you look at this and then when you go to do your own and like I said do your sample first but it will make a lot of sense so this is going to go here on that side And then this is going to go down here. Like I said, you can also use your white glue for sure. But so two, you're doing two on the front of the mountain. And uh, just kind of doing this to make sure I'm kind of getting a right angle. Not that it matters because it's a little short. So, but we kind of want to get it right so you're going to do two on the front side of the mountain and then one on the back side for each of these okay so flip it over and just get to the back side of that So this is a fun way to use our gel prints for sure because um, you know what I didn't want that there so I'm going to put this here at the top. So I wanted it to be a little bit contrasty so since I have that there now on that edge I'll get another one because we want this to look like that. So I got to put it down here. <laughs> put that there. And once again, we'll sort of get it even with the other pages in terms of kind of bringing it out. Okay, so the main thing is that it's going to go in between like that. And uh, yeah. So, and if you find that. Um, if you find that they're kind of butting up against each other a little bit because I'm I kind of pulled from another one don't hesitate to shave a little bit off I'm just gonna shave like a like a 16th off and you put it back down there so I want to show you all the little tricks and stuff so that you can have success so so I could see there where it was sort of bumping into each other when, when this one was opening because I kind of pulled it from a different stack that had a slightly different measurement. So it doesn't hurt to make the, the, little one, the middle ones just shy, just a little bit. And then they won't bump into each other when they open because you see what we have here, right? Let's see. Closes and then opens like this. Or, or it can turn a page, a page kind of concept but this one's designed to be nice and sculptural so we're going to go with that and so this goes at the bottom and we have one more to go So I want to make sure once again that this is square. Okay. Alrighty. So we have these four more and I'm going to take this one. Let's see what these are looking like here. So this goes here. This goes here. So I think I want, and you sort of can kind of look and play with where you want. So I think I want that one there. Well, that one looks good there. Let's put this one here. 
So since that's the middle one, I'm gonna go ahead and shave a little bit off again, just so that I don't run into any problems. And literally, I'm just taking off a hair. And you only have to worry about it for the center one. So just the littlest about. Okay, so that's gonna go on this side. And I want this side to face, so we need to make sure that that's the side that gets the glue. Or do I want it? I want it like this. So this side has to get the glue, because I want this to open like that. So the glue goes here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just take your time with it. It's kind of like a puzzle book, but there's so much fun and they're very sculptural. And I think that, I mean, there's such a good use for gel prints in a way that allows us to use them as like a little gallery. You know, like a lot of these folded books structures, in my mind sort of have this kind of like idea of display or you know like a gallery vibe where you know you can just take your really pretty prints and um put them in something that allows them to, to stand alone you know okay so it's kind of getting hard to see i know let's do it like that it allows them to stand alone and uh and also these sort of pop-up kind of books are cool because you know it allows you to you know to see them in a different way so I'm gonna put that one there that one goes here and this is our last one okay Ah, now since this is going to be my center one, I'm going to want to just trim it down a little bit. It doesn't hurt to trim it just a bit so we know that it won't bump into the, the one next to it. Okay, so this is going to go like this. Okay. So one wants to fall off. It takes a minute for because it's a lot of acrylic um, paint on uh, on our card stock and the pages so you know it takes a minute for it to set up and of course I'm moving it right along because I want you know I want it you know it to take too long for you guys to get the idea but long enough that there's no need to rush so that you get it So you can sort of see where it's going in there to make sure, like I can see right now, this one could stand to be a little, even a little shorter. So don't hesitate when you're going to put it in. If you have to make an additional adjustment, do, because you want it to fit in between this one and that one. So just as long as it lifts up, you're in good shape. Okay, so we're gonna let this, set up and I'll be back to show you everything let's let it cool down <laughs> okay I'm back so we're done um, and so it's all nice and dry and you can see how you can literally turn it as pages like this so if if there's a full like this works nice for photographs and stuff too or if you're doing like transfers like jelly print transfers you could have the full image on one side like this this is also fun if you want to do something like this for 
your kids or grandkids or something like that you could do each a photo of each of them and just sort of make sure the photo is about the same size so that you can have eyes nose and mouth in the same place and then you know like it flip-flops and so they can sort of see their faces flipping and you know eyes and you know like one changing around and it's like so cool but anyhow you see how this flips it literally goes flat and it opens every other which really does a whole nother neat design but you can also stand it up and so it has this very much this gallery kind of vibe to it so if you're working with your gel prints and you kind of want to maybe do them in an exhibition and shows things like that this little design book works really well because it becomes like a gallery of its own without having to flip the pages it stands up it's very sculptural so there you have it pretty straightforward so you know as structures go um this we did inside of an hour and that's pretty good for something that has sort of this level and look at the spine like the back is so cool too but that has this level of complexity so that when it's done it's like wow how was that done you know it's, it kind of gives you that sort of thinking like wow how did they do that but yet um it's very simple and very straightforward and then i just like to tie you know you can tie anything around it to keep it closed you know because i have this graffiti i kind of wanted this sort of grunge kind of closure on mine but, um, you know, you could kind of choose to do yours whichever way you want it. And, yeah, and you're, oh, I love it. Oh, you're ready to go. Oh, you can tell. Books make me so happy. Like, I'm so excited to have done this, this project. Um, and so my goal this year, along with showing you the various, you know, ways to flush out gel printing and to add to the library of things that you're already doing, like other ways to use your prints so that you can build a, like a, a diverse library of different ways um, to work with your gel prints. And book structures are just ideal. I mean, we know we can collage, do larger pieces of art. Um, you know, we already know junk journals and things like that. But because my background is in books, I taught books at university. Um, you know, I've got a vast knowledge in books. I thought, let me share as many fun, easy book structures that will allow you to take your gel prints um, and your art and your collage to another level. So hope you enjoyed this little baby. I'm excited about her. And uh, I look forward to seeing yours. Uh, you guys a lot of times show me on, you know, Instagram and on Facebook. But if you enjoyed this video, please thumb it up and um, new to my channel, hit the bell, hit all so you get notifications. And for those of you, we've been chatting it up in, um, in Premiere. Love you guys so much. Love all of you all who view my videos and support my work. Have fun this week in your studios. And until next week. Happy creating. Love you guys. Bye-bye.
Welcome to my studio school and, you know, where we tell stories visually with art mythos. And um, you're seeing this, we're looking at a course or you've purchased a course and you may have some questions around how you access it. All the courses are evergreen. So you can come to this, to your school um, portal at any point and go back to look at any course that you've already previously purchased. It'll always be there. You can go self-paced. So you get the course. You don't get a chance to go through all of it at one time. You can always come back and the cu curriculum will show you where you left off. And so you'll have an idea where to pick up. You can also go back and look at anything over and over again. There's no limit to the amount of times that you can view your videos. Also, if you've purchased a course that happens to have a live session with it, which I normally do as a Q&A, so it allows us all to get together after you've taken the pre-recorded course uh, and to get together, you can ask questions, any additional demos that you would like for me to do, I do during those Q&As. You can show and share, me, share with me what you've done, what worked, what didn't work. So it's a really fun couple hour session where we get together and we flush this thing out. Now you can come with your camera on. You don't have to have the camera on because it's a Zoom. You control that. And uh, if you happen to miss the, the Zoom session because it doesn't work with your schedule, when the Zoom is over, we upload it. So the Zoom is always there for you to come and be able to view, see the questions that were asked, any demos that I did, and any of my answers. So that's always available to you. And um, always reach out to us at info at robinmcclendon.com if ever there's some questions or things that you're not clear on. So take care. Bye-bye.